Hello and a warm welcome to Federal special program, Capital Beat. Just ahead of the India Alliance meeting, Baljan Samaj Party President Mayawati yesterday made it clear that she's not interested in entering into any kind of alliance with the NDA or the India Alliance, saying that both these coalitions are communal, casteist and corrupt. She said that she will go alone for the Lok Sabha elections, which means that she will contest alone. She said she will also go ahead and contest elections in states like Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Telangana. But she would not enter into any kind of alliance. But if you look at the trajectory of uh, Mayawati and BSP, uh, with the passing time, she has looked more and more irrelevant when you compare it with her meteoric prospects uh, in Uttar Pradesh, especially in 2007. And there is a marked drop in her political prospects. But then also she's very confident in 2019, uh, she got about nine seats uh, in Lok Sabha, despite the declining graph in the state assemblies. So one doesn't know what's really going on in Mayawati's mind. What is her ultimate objective? How will she remain politically relevant? All those are questions just in the realm of speculation because nobody uh, seems to be knowing what's happening in Mayawati's uh, uh, mind. Uh, joining me now are two veterans, in fact, who has who have a lot of ground knowledge as to what's happening with BSP and Mayawati. Joining me now is senior journalist Sharad Pathan, who joins us from Uttar Pradesh. So thank you so much for joining. We also have Badri Narayan, who's the author of a famous book uh, uh, called uh, The Making of the Dalit Public in North India. He's also written about Dalit mobilization and Dalit assertion. Thank you, sir, so much for joining. And let me begin with Badri Narayan. Mr. Narayan, what do you think is the main reason uh, which forces Mayawati to say that she will contest elections all alone without entering into any kind of alliance? Uh, you know, I, I think we should start uh, this this conversation with Sir Pudhan, you know. No, 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 no. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. <laughs> okay. I want to hear you. I want to listen to you. Mr. Narayan, you go ahead, but, then I'll come to Sharaji uh, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but I think let me try. Let me try to respond to your question. See, uh, uh, what is going in her mind is very difficult to read, you know. We can't enter in her mind, but we can observe and analyze her uh, position, her positioning through the, the what he's saying and what she is doing. Uh, action and uh, the statements are the text for us. So I think uh, uh, the first thing, Mayavati is a very hard negotiator. You no, know, if she will not get right, uh, right, uh, right space or uh, so she will not go into the first thing in that. I, either in both the hands. And, and I think she's losing day by day her, uh, her, her uh, political value. That's why that kind of negotiation is not possible. In that situation, there is only one option left for us to be alone and, and try to, uh, to evolve and develop her root uh, value in coming election. But you know, her strength is that she has, she has certain percentage of vote everywhere. And she has no power, she will lose power to get victory to anyone. She has a power to defeat anyone. And so the power of defeat is, is, a, is, a, is a, a itself a value. So she, in this election, she wants to show the power of defeat, which from where the Kashi Rama has started his politics. Pahle haarenge, fir haarenge, fir, uh, so that beginning, again, she has to go in the from the zero. She has to start from the zero, first thing. Second thing is that uh, her uh, position like this is going to help BJP in many sense because uh, because if she will join uh, BJP, she is not going to uh, benefit BJP in that way. But being separate and and helping uh, uh, in that way to defeat opposition is going to help BJP in, in many sense, sense. But are you, Mr. Narayan, are you confident that uh, she will ultimately end up benefiting BJP? Because many people in Delhi have been saying that uh, Mayavati's fight is still open-ended. She will gauge what happens in the in the state assemblies in uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. And then apparently she'll open her cards and she might uh, join the India Alliance. Do you see that probability? See, politics is the is the is the name of possibility. Anything can happen in the politics. But what I see that uh, that 
see, BJP, if BJP has developed its own vote block among Dalits, no, they are, they don't talk in terms of Dalit or Madinas. They have evolved another category that is the beneficiary. And beneficiary beyond the caste. Various caste of Dalit and marginals and ODCs comes in that. So they don't, they are not dependent in that way on the Mayavati for getting the Dalit votes. But uh, if Mayavati will cut certain percent of vote from the uh, candidates against whom, against whom she is going, BSP is going to fight, that will help BJP, BJP in many seats, on many seats. Right. It will help uh, sometime India also because somewhere she will uh, help, uh, she will cut the vote of the BJP. So it can also happen, but not in big way. The big way she is going to harm India Alliance votes, especially uh, in Uttar Pradesh, uh, Samajwadi Party. If Mayawati and Samajwadi Party vote blocks comes together, that will form, that will give a miraculous impact. But it could not happen in the past. It's also true because they couldn't create a better chemistry at the grassroots. They formed the alliance of the party, but not the alliance of the masses. What right. Kasi Ram used to say that we are not going to form the alliance with the parties, but the alliance with the public. So maybe Mayawati in this time, if she works hard at the grassroots, she may be able to create that kind of chemistry and alliance of the various castes comes under the Delhi category and some MDCs. Right. You uh, said in your uh, statement that if she works hard, and I'm going to underline that statement. Uh, but before I go to Sharad Pradhanji, I would like to welcome uh, Sudha Pai. She's a political scientist and a retired professor of political science from JNU. Thank you, ma'am, so much for joining. And I hope uh, I'm audible to you because... Uh, you yes, have yes, you're audible to me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, ma'am. Great to have you on the program. And I'll just come to you in a bit. But uh, before that, I'd like to go to Sharad Pradhanji. What uh, Badri Narayan was saying that if she works hard. Now, does Mayawati look like she's working hard or she's a sedentary player in politics, uh, uh, given the current uh, circumstances in which she's operating? Well, uh, I, while I fully agree with what Badri Narayan said, uh, I'm taking it uh, like forward. Let me let me point out, as far as her seriousness is concerned, or I don't think she has any, the, the intention is very, very evident. Uh, she doesn't intend to, she has kind of uh, taken a back, back seat or they have gone on the back foot for the simple reason that she is being obviously intimidated because of the sword of CBI and ED now also hanging over her necks. And you know, in the, in these days, the way CBI and uh, ED are used to settle political scores is, is an open game. Now there's no, uh, no there's no, uh, uh, no, nothing behind the scenes. It's very, very blatant. So, and Mayavati has reason to get uh, threatened by these things. Well, in the past, all the, anyway, anybody who has an enormous wealth far beyond uh, legitimate means has to behave like that. And that's why most of our politicians do. And in more so, Mayavati. You know, Mayavati, you've seen. <laughs> So that is the reason you see her in, over the past few years. She has virtually, she has been lying low, not being active at all, which clearly reflects her intent, which is to keep off. And whatever she says, if you look into her, the, the, her track record, the kind of statements she has been making, very, very obvious what Badri Narayan also hinted was the idea is to benefit the BJP. Obviously, she wouldn't want to benefit the BJP out of a sweet will. It is simply because she ought to be under some kind of intimidation. Hmm. And so that's the reason she is doing it. Now, why she gets active every time, if you see the past three elections, she gets active only closer to the elections. Hmm. That, that reason is again very plain and simple. You know, she wants her market value, market value, it's very important, to remain in the market. So the how to maintain that because because hers is one of the now every all other parties are also following course, but her everybody knows that her tickets are sold at a grand price, because whoever pays for the ticket knows that he wins the election not because of himself but because of Mayavati or earlier in the name of Mr. Kashiram, and Kashiram of course the man who built the party and Mayavati got it on a platter I would say, and that's the reason she is become so easily inactive. The, uh, Age is still on her side. It is not as she she was born in uh, 1956. So th that doesn't uh, make... She's only about uh, 67, 68, 67. 
which is in by indian standards quite a young and fit she's pretty fit but this now that she's doing what she does is when she gets active she wants everybody to know that look here i am also a player in the in the game so if you remain in the market and you send this message across at least you'll get a good price for the ticket simple as that i am being very very blunt but that's how it is this is a hard reality and that's the reason her party has just kind of fallen apart and bjp is unable to been able to tap that floating vote of the bsp barring a larger chunk of the jata vote which she continues to uh, have in her kitty and which i will also go away i think fade away over a period of time if she continues with the same and what she is doing now she is obviously not going to i don't think she has any intention of joining the india alliance until she knows at that stage what you said is a, is meaningful that towards closer to the elections to the parliament elections she may do some rethinking if she realizes that it's end of the uh, the great modi regime then she Thank is you, likely to switch sides and you know the, and there she will want she, her power to flex she doesn't do things without that one thing will be to get the ed and cbi or her offer up and second will be she'll bargain for a for the top job maybe for the top job or maybe something number 2 or something otherwise she's not going to compromise with anyone with bjp she has no choice but hmm. to follow follow and fall in line right right uh but uh, sudarshi if i may come to you uh what do you think uh, is uh, is uh, uh, mayawati's uh, end game i mean uh, what does she really want in life what sharaji has just explained what badri narayan just explained uh, like the announcement which she made yesterday that she will go solo she is not going to enter into any kind of alliance now what is the basic objective uh, despite her irrelevance she continues to say that you know every political party wants to enter into an alliance with bsp she always says that yesterday also she said that in her tweet that every party wants to enter into an alliance but at the same time there is a growing irrelevance of mayawati now is this an enigma really to understand uh, the phenomena of mayawati well i would agree with sharad ji that she is afraid of the ed and the cbi uh, but i would like to separate the immediate factors from the larger political scene in up and more long term factors as well more immediately yes she is very aware of cbi, uh, CBI and ed she is also aware of the fact that her party is unraveling you see there has been breakdown of her organizational structure especially after the dalit muslim alliance broke down in the muzaffarnagar riot she has not been able to really put it together again there has been the expulsion or the desertion of senior leaders so there has been a certain hollowing out of the party she is very aware of that and so and also the sarvajan strategy divided her party further uh leaving just the um, jatavs jamar jatavs with her the smaller sub caste became even more disillusioned with her but i think one should look at dalit politics in up in its larger framework and i think what we are seeing in the 2000s is fragmentation that is the high water mark was 2007 when she got a very large number of votes uh, and uh, seats and also votes from all sections of dalits as well as from some other upper caste most backward caste and so on after that it's been a downward slide and um, you know because of the failure of the sarvajan strategy there has been fragmentation along sub caste lines along ideology and along region as well you know um, the in the poorest who were um, influenced by hinduization in the colonial period and coming down to our own are today very much attracted by the investment startups may remain with her but it depends on you know in future what happens whether they will continue to remain with her or not and in terms of ideology there is the division between the pro bsp and there is the hindutvadi dalits and then thirdly there is also chandrashekhar azad so i would say that she is very aware of the fragmentation that is taking place and maybe she is biding her time to see what to do you know till closer to the election because if she joins the india alliance i mean if you look at it um, 
you know, over a period of time. In the 1990s, she made an alliance with the Congress. She found out that transfer of votes takes place from BSP to Congress, but not from Congress to BSP. I mean, she didn't get much out of it. In 2012, as soon as there was some point of weakness and corruption was brought up and all that, and strong campaigning by the SP, large number of them in 2012 went to the SP. <clears throat> that happened again in 2022. So she is very aware of this fragmentation. And therefore, I, the Mahagat Bandhan, of course, they did transfer votes to each other, but it didn't really help. So I think she's seeing all these imponderables and she will take her time and closer to the election, she will decide. And the reason why she wants to go perhaps alone is because she thinks it is not going to benefit her. Dalit votes might go to others and others votes may not, will not come to her. So therefore she thinks going alone at this point of time is probably the best strategy. But closer to the elections, if she finds it profitable, and if she thinks in terms of her strategy that it's you know a good thing to do, she might join the India Alliance, but uh, as was said on her terms, but can she really dictate terms? I don't think so. Um, I mean, in UP, um, the SP seems to be doing well. And here I would like to say the Gosi Bipole, which is going to take place on September 5th, is going to be a very important event mm -hmm. because it will show how strong the SP is. You know, whether Dara Singh Chauhan will win or it is the date against him who will win and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I think there is time still and she's very aware of all these imponderables which are there, as you said, enigmas. And therefore, I think she's as yet to work out her strategy and she does face a great deal of, uh, uh, you know, problems. She's trying to, I would say she's at this point of trying trying to rebuild the organization, though not very well. She seems to be relying on family. And uh, she thinks of going alone, biding her time to wait and see what is the best strategy. Right. But uh, Patri, if I, if I may come to you, I was just looking at the statistics of the electoral reverses which BSP has faced. Now, 2018, uh, she won six seats in Rajasthan, two in Chhattisgarh. Then uh, from in 2019, there were 10 MPs. Sorry, I correct myself because I initially said there were nine MPs. There were 10 MPs which got elected to Lok Sabha. That was in 2019, despite the reduced presence in the state assemblies. And uh, in uh, and 2009, this figure was 21. Now, obviously, there is a huge uh, shrinking of the electoral space when it comes to BSP. So from whatever we can gather and whatever she has in her mind, uh, would it be right to completely write off uh, Mayawati from the electoral scene? Or do you see a possibility of her coming back, uh, you know, in the same aggressive manner in what we saw in 2007? She also made a mention yesterday about 2007 elections. Yeah, uh, let me begin with a famous statement of Marx. History don't repeat itself. If it repeats, first time it's become Mazak or Bukhan, you know. Uh -huh. So I, I think it's not going to happen again in that way. But uh, but what I see that there is a para paradigm shift in Dalit politics and which mostly people don't understand. And that shift is uh, evolving at another category among marginals and Dalits that is the beneficiary category. Beneficiary consciousness has emerged. It's like caste consciousness and it is working beyond the caste. And that's why Mayavati or any Dalit politics, any independent Dalit politics, I see is not possible at least 10, 15 years. So there is a decline, there may be fragmentation, it's a part of that process. And that, and that fragmentation, in my view, is going to benefit BJP. And going to this movement of the votes are going towards BJP. But if Mayavati, uh, I, I think opposition has started wrongly this forming this alliance. They couldn't approach Mayavati in a, in a very respectable manner, what she was expecting, because Nitish Kumar came in uh, uh, Lucknow, maybe Saraji correct, correct me, and, and they, uh, they couldn't contact Mayavati. And so Mayavati is not Lalu Yadav, what Lalu Yadav said, Kisne bulaya hai ki wo ayana. Yeah. bulaya nahi hai. Lekin, if they will invite her, 
So what he he said, rightly said, he uh, she will, is hard bargainer. She will do bargaining for higher position. Agar wo de deti hain, tabhi wo join karengi. Otherwise, being separate is also a power for rivalry. Akela larna is is more privileged than joining any alliance. Right. So because she, in in uh, she will cre create her uh, bargaining power more uh, powerfully to being separate. Uh, underhand bargaining. Which, You're saying uh, that if she goes so solo, is, then uh, she will have more bargaining power. Pardon? I'm saying that if she goes solo in elections, you are saying yes. that she will have more bargaining power. Bargaining power. And right. what uh, Saraji had explained, no, a journalist can explain only. We can't. Right, right. Uh, under, I, I think Sudhaji wanted to make a point. The uh, uh, power of, no, for everything, uh, being uh, solo is powerful. For, is, is right, right. Power. You can extract your pound of flesh. Yes. Exactly. So that you raised your point. Uh, you raised your hand. I think. No, you wanted to make a point. <laughs> so that no, no. I think uh, I would answer your question like this: that we are entering a post BSP post BSP phase where Dalit politics is concerned, and that's what I meant by fragmentation. There's no pan UP party today, and for some time there may not be. And I think. If we look at it from um, you know the late colonial period onwards, there have been periods when Dalits have accommodated and have been part of mainstream parties, for example, the Congress. Then you have the 1990s when you have uh, the rise of Kanchiram and Mayawati and so on and so forth. And then you have this phase of decline again. But this second phase of decline is far greater. You know, the rise, the revival of the BJP is actually, and I would agree with uh, Abhiji that, you know, it's going to benefit the BJP. But what I would like to say is that perhaps we're entering a period of, when I say fragmentation, I mean, fragmentation can be seen in two ways. It can be seen as a total crisis, or it can be seen as a kind of self-confidence where you have Jan Shekhar Azad on the one hand, you have other people in other parts of UP bringing up other kinds of organizations. And maybe in the long run, a regrouping of this in some other way will come about. So I would say we're entering a post BSP phase and one need not see this negatively. As I've said in a recent book of mine, because much has been achieved. You see, the BSP started out with the idea of self-respect, dignity, empowerment. To some extent, Dalits have got that. So today they have the confidence to vote for whichever party they think is going to give them something. Hmm. Now in, in 2024, they think ST, uh, you know, can reach out to them and ST is a better option. A section of them may go to the ST as they did in uh, uh, the early assembly elections. And a section may go uh, towards the BJP. So yeah. I think when I say fragmentation, I'm not really talking about it is unraveling, but it's not necessarily a total weakening of the Dalit movement. It's a sort of uh, yeah. breaking up of it and perhaps in the long run, a regrouping in a new form. Right. You said that we are into a post-BSP phase where the Dalit weakening might not happen. But uh, Sharachi, if I may ask you, uh, talking purely from the point of view of Mayawati, uh, somebody who was seen as the Dalit Messiah, and now we see her uh, decline in this format. We don't even know whether she will come back, uh, you know, with the same uh, golden halo which she had in 2007. Uh, what would you really say? I mean, is it an end of a phase? It looks like an end of a phase. She's just trying to struggle to remain relevant, uh, trying to make the right noises, uh, you know, in the political space so that people do recognize that, of course, there is a Mayavati, there is an elephant which exists. But uh, the, the reality is that it doesn't. Actually, you, you said it. And, and uh, the idea of showing that the elephant exists is only to, with the, with the you know, something, uh, the, the, with the, as I said earlier, it is with an objective mm -hmm. of, as simple as that, filling the coffers. That's all. Nothing beyond that. Which, and that is what has killed the party. So you filling, know, the coffer, had... filling the coffer and also protecting it. Absolutely. And they're protecting it. Very, very well said. You know, otherwise, if Marwati did not have this lust for the lucre, probably she would have been an undisputed Dalit leader of this country. 
Right. He would have he would have been cast in the same this thing as uh, Jagjivan Ram used to be once upon a time, hmm. but she lost it. I am sure if Kashi Ram was in her place, things would have been totally different, because he is the man who built it from a scratch. And let me point out another thing. You know, Maya Vati, when she when we attribute this to her that she got ten seats in two thousand nineteen in the Lok Sabha election. let me point out something very significant why she how she got those seats with this alliance with akhilesh was the, the whole it was i think akhilesh was fooled into this alliance and he thought it was mayawati was being very generous by pardoning his father and the samajwadi party for what they did to her in 1995 the infamous kestaus case when she was attacked by the samajwadi party goons it was actually she wanted to take revenge simple as that in which she said thereafter after winning the she ensured that her party vote did not get transferred to akhilesh and akhilesh akhilesh in his, uh, i mean i would say that he was fooled into it and he was so gullible that he ensured that the samajwadi party vote got transferred to S, uh, bsp and that is the reason otherwise i can assure you mayawati wouldn't have got more than one seat in that election and akhilesh came down to five so so that was a lesson that she taught to him and then after she walked away instantly after that so and you know mayawati's unpredictability mayawati is proved herself to be absolutely unreliable as far as politics where most politicians are unreliable but in her case it's a little more unreliable than others so she takes the cake and and at the moment i think now she is only now she is busy projecting as you pointed out her she is only concerned about her family and now it has become more of a it was always a one woman party and now the nephew who's uh, i i don't think he doesn't have uh, the fire in him uh, and uh, now she is not looking for anything uh, looking up to anything she is quite seems to be quite content with what she has and what she can retain which is very important and which is what she is doing and doing it very successfully the until uh, modi is on the scene and she sees that modi is going to uh, modi's dream of coming back is is if she looks at it that way uh, positively then she is not going to change she is continuing to uh, and she will ensure that she plays team b for the bjp indirectly which is i mean i, I feel that ovc and mayawati are doing the same job hmm. for for the bjp and and you know if if mayawati uh, could be i mean at, as of today to imagine to to even imagine that mayawati would become a serious player in this game in 24 i i think it is pretty naive to think like that today because she has as you rightly pointed out she has not only lost her relevance she has killed her relevance herself right but if if she's playing this game of vested interest uh, bajrina nayan if i'll i'll come to you and sudha pai for the concluding comments now that uh, uh, what what is the future of bsp and mayawati then uh, of course she's playing a game which is to protect herself to protect her wealth but what is the future of the party and herself because we don't see a second rung leadership at all see uh, actually uh, what uh, uh, mayawati did uh, uh, injustice with the community and in justice with the history because the opportunity history gives to her is a ample opportunity to evolve what sarad ji told her bigger like jagjivan ram and and uh, uh, and but and still dalits are waiting for more you now if she moves from lucknow or delhi to uh, to the uh, villages of uttar pradesh she will get enormous response by the dalits they are waiting for her but she is not going to do because of the history okay. and and so uh, please don't uh, underestimate the potential of mayawati she has a lot of potential still but she is not going to do i don't know why uh, sharad ji has responded in his own way so that ji may have arranged for this second thing is uh, because of her strategy whatever she is doing uh bsp is going you are already you said that bsp and mayawati both are going to be irrelevant day by day at least at the level of discourse at the level of obvious political discourse but at the grassroots ground uh, possibility potential is with uh, still for but what i said earlier that uh, i see coming coming 10 15 years 
the rise of independent Dalit politics and the possibility of the rise of independent Dalit politics will be uh, uh, will be weak, weak because of another kind of configuration are happening in the politics. Politics is not like Dalit politics that we had seen in 20 years ago. Now Dalit are uh, Dalit community as itself has a big change among them. Change of the aspirations, psyche, demands. Uh, they, every day they want to sustain, and then their the struggle of sustenance is bigger right. than the, uh, the 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 identity struggle. No identity. Uh, I, earlier I used to uh, glorify the sense of identity among us. Now we see how it's going to be faded day right. by day. And, right. and I so think Sharadi was raising his hand. I just tell you, one small thing which uh, I think we are ignoring is also, you know, if if at all, that's a big if, if Congress makes some effort to revive itself in UP, uh, which it seems to be doing, and if Khadge, Malakarjun Khadge plays some role in that, though now they have sh shunted out one Dalit they had appointed, which turned out to be, who turned out to be a, quite a nimkam poop, he didn't do anything. In case they do anything of that sort, there is a likelihood that they may be able to tap a small section of the Dalit vote. And that may bring in, and you know, that, that will, if there is, if at all, so far there is no effort on the part of the Congress to do anything concrete in that direction. Then there could be another shift in the Dalit uh, politics. Right. Okay. So, uh, Sudha, if I may come to you. So, uh, Mayawati's uh, status quo stand will continue or you expect that she could spring in some kind of a surprise either for the India Alliance or for the NDA? It's difficult to say at this point what she will do at the last minute. Normally, earlier she used to do quiet electioneering on the ground and nobody knew about it. But she doesn't seem to be doing even that now. But having said that, um, I would say, firstly, there is still tremendous respect for Benji. I mean, um, I remember during field work, somebody telling us that, you know, if she goes to jail, every Dalit will be on the street. Mm. So she still commands a certain respect. But I think Dalits are making a difference between the respect they give her and the way they use their vote. See, after all, you have one vote. So when they cast that, they will cast it for who they think is going to give them something. Because today, Dalits are led not so much by identity as in the past, but by economic aspiration. So in that sense, there is a certain maturing of the Dalit movement. That is, they think that you need not cast your vote for one person only, but you know you can make your choices like all other castes do. So right. it will depend on what she will do at the last minute. If she does strong electioneering, she might get some votes. If the Congress revives itself, the Congress might get some votes. But if she does nothing, a large number of the votes will go to the BJP. Because I think Dalits will then have no other option as such. And they will see her as that. You see, at present, what, what is happening? It's a very complex situation on the ground, which might change, which may not change. There is respect for Mayavati. When there is an atrocity in Western UP, particularly, they phone Chandrasekhar Azad, who appears. Absolutely. But three months or two months or one month hence, when there's an election, they vote for the BJP because they don't see him as electoral material. Right. And we saw this in Hathras also. So I think yeah. Dalits, uh, there is a great deal of Dalit discussion on the ground which will not go away anywhere. And which might lead to a regrouping, as I said earlier, later on. It's up to Mayavati whether she wants to tap it, how she will tap it, and if she's able to tap it. That will depend on how the Congress behaves and how the SD behaves and how they are able to tap into the Dalit vote in UP. Otherwise, it's bound to go to the BJP. Right. One quick comment from Sharaji, if I may ask you uh, to what Sudha just said, that if she does a strong electioneering, but do you think that political will still remains in Mayawati to go on a strong electoral pitch, go and give her uh, the, give her best in the elections? I don't see that will within her. That is that is what is lacking. What uh, Sudha Pai said is absolutely right. If she shows that will, which she doesn't, hmm. and willfully she doesn't show that hmm. will, you know, that's so, and you know, as she rightly pointed out, he's scared of going to jail. Both, both Akhilesh and Mayavati that way are the same. They are both very timid and they are not like the 
uh, grassroots politicians like unlike uh, you know mulayam's father uh, akhilesh's father mulayam who if you were threatened to be sent to jail he would say okay i go ahead you follow me so you know that is the kind of grit you need which both mayawati and akhilesh lack and which is also why i feel that akhilesh is also not on a as strong a footing as he appears to be hmm. because he doesn't have the courage the courage of conviction to fight right and that is what is lacking with mayawati as well right so that political will is also lacking so badri narayan a very short comment from you that does this point to an end game for mayawati that all said and done uh, she doesn't have the political will she doesn't uh, have the will to you know put up a strong fight she's protecting her wealth she doesn't have a second uh, rung leadership right. uh, she's not able to transfer her votes to any of the parties so obviously she is not relevant for any of the coalitions so what has happened i mean do, uh, do we see this as the end game of mayawati probably her last innings now no i don't think uh, mayawati will uh, sustain and continue as a part of obvious political discourse but he would continue as a dominant player not as an yes, actor as a player as a player uh, as a player in the politics and you see even in this coming election being either see uh, a fight as solo or be to join any political party being right solo will make her more relevant than join alliance okay but uh, because that will create third uh, no Third pool of the elections, but it's back. That, that will attract interpretations, discussions, values, right. and the votes and the charcha. So, what is the charcha? Right. And but the, it's baffling. And the votes, no, and the votes see, jitna mila right. hai, that's already jitna milega usko. Usme wo <laughs> chahe akeli lade, chahe saath me lade. To saath me lade to alliance. If other caste comes to her, and which is not possible, which is not happening. So, I think this. being uh, uh, as a contesting election coming election uh, soul uh, as a soul political party separately i think it is uh, it is also a privileged position for mayawati as i said in the beginning i just stick to that and mayawati waise hi karengi i don't see that she is going to join any of these two alliances this no, is my what, maybe wrong right what i was saying but it is really baffling to understand this in politics you know this phenomena of staying dormant and then also making the right noises and make yourself look relevant uh, so this is really a game which uh, i think only mayawati can play uh, but how long can she continue with this game is something to watch out for thank you so much it was really a lovely chat with the three of you sharad ji uh, sudha pai badri narayan it was wonderful having you on the program and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this panel discussion subscribe to our channel send us your feedback and stay tuned to the federal thank you Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.